In this video, we're going to learn about how to make parallel calls to GPT API using async IO. We are going to be making 100 concurrent async calls to get a function for each one of these categories. See, I have a list of 108 general purpose explanations for Python functions. We're going to send this to GPT-4 and going to get a function for each. Then we are going to save it into a JSON file like this. After that, we're going to save it into Python functions directory. As you see, we're going to have a lot of functions. While we're talking about the code, we're going to learn about how to use async IO. We're going to take a look at rate limits and what it means and how to actually work with them using Tenacity library with retries. We're going to talk about term color to be able to print colorful prints in the terminal and also how to get json files looking pretty like this with pretty json extension for visual studio code this code will be available to download at patreon for patreon supporters along with 70 plus other project files link will be in the description also check out my echo hive ai academy at echohive.live where you can search and watch all the videos that i have created we are going to be making 100 calls to gpt4 to get Python functions for a purpose. Our purpose will be coming from these general purposes list, like scraping websites, simulating a game of chess, calculating Fibonacci sequences. Let's run this and see what happens. As you see, we have started our async calls. We have actually started only half of them. The reason is GPT-4 currently only allows 200 responses per minute and 40,000 tokens per minute. And I was worried that I might actually run into the token limitation with or if I were to make all 100 calls at the same time. So we are dividing it into two right here. No matter, we are actually making 50 calls at the same time. We could have made 100 calls because we are applying tenacity to retry in the case of a rate limit error. But I just didn't want to run into that. Just in case, I just divided it into two. What Tenacity will do here is that if it runs into errors, then it will wait a random amount of time, but increasing exponentially between 1 to 60 seconds, it will try a total of six times before giving up. So you can take a look at the rate limits for OpenAI, uh, the rate limits under your account. And GPT 3.5 Turbo allows for 3,500 responses per minute and 90,000 tokens per minute. GPT 4, 200 requests per minute and 40,000 tokens per minute. And OpenAI actually gives great explanation and actually offers how to mitigate this problem using Tenacity, Backoff Library, or Manual Backoff Implementation. In our case, we are using Tenacity. Okay, as we see, first half of the calls are finished and we have started the second half. This took about a minute or something. We are timing it. We're going to be able to see how long this entire process takes. I also forgot to mention that I will be at Patreon also be providing all these functions as well. So you not only are going to find the project files, but also all the Python files which we are going to receive from GPT-4. So you don't have to do this yourself if you don't want to. Okay, our async calls have finished. It took 464 seconds. We did wait 60 seconds in between the batches so actually it's 400 it took us 400 seconds to create 100 functions 108 totally but it says total tokens used is 25,000, but i'm not sure if this count is accurate so it took us about six and a half minutes this would have taken i'm assuming maybe close to an hour maybe more if you were to do it serially I do want to mention that I did get this list from the chat.openai, the chat GPT interface using GPT-4. I'll also be providing the list to Patreon supporters as well. So let's take a look at the, we have saved it as a, a JSON file. As you see, it's all jumbled up. Now, if you actually go to your extensions in Visual Studio, from your extensions, search for pretty JS or JSON, this will come up. And if you install that extension, after it is installed, go back to your JSON file, select all of it, and then do Control shift p to bring out your commands. And then type in 3D, and then click on Pretty JSON, and it'll turn into a much prettier readable format. We have saved the tokens used for each one of the functions as well. 
We have a utilities file to write the functions, which is a two is just two functions, one of which is to write functions from JSON to a folder, and another one to actually search over them. We are actually going to initiate the first one to write all the JSON items to our file. Sometimes I guess we're gonna run into Unicode and code errors. I've just added this try except block. Good thing that happened. Let's run this again. Okay, and we had some errors, but other than that, we have created our Python functions directory with all of our functions in it. I actually realized that we have only saved half of the functions because the async.json file only have half of it because when we split the async calls in half, we were actually extending the second half to the first half. So I'm actually going to go ahead, although this is it's not the most expensive thing in the world, but it costs a pretty penny. I'm going to actually run this again, and then so we'll have all of our functions. I have actually updated the code. See, we had to just extend the first half with the second half. I'm actually going to keep these original functions because I have created the utilities so that if it finds the same file name, it will, it will actually enumerate it. So this way we'll just end up having about 150 functions, which is fine. So now I'm running the concurrent async calls again. First half and the second half, hopefully this time, we'll have all of our 100 functions. Okay, our first half of async calls was finished. Now we are on to the second. Hopefully this time, we'll have all of our functions. Maybe we actually finished them, but I was running them again because accidentally here in my code, I was running the loop again. I'm just going to delete that, so it should be fine. I know that we have all our calls ready because I have this helper function real quick to count the length of it. And when we run this, we see that we have 108, which is the how many items we have in our list. I also have a length function here to count the length of the list as 108 as well. I'll comment this out. Now let's run our utility again to save all the files into Python functions. And now we have all of it except a few that have actually Unicode errors and whatnot. These are all generated with GPT-4. As you see, there's convolutional neural networks from scratch. Actually, this is pretty cool. Predicting house prices here using linear regression. Simulating a game of chess here. I actually ran this and look what it printed. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Solving traveling salesman problem. Generating a procedural maze. I'm not sure if all these work, so that's why. Be careful when you're running them. Okay. I put a note here. Here's a simulating behavior of gas particle in chamber. It's actually updating its position. So some of these don't work, but pretty awesome. I have another helper function, search Python functions, which will actually allow us to search over them. So let's search, for example, plot. It found one, plotting graphs for mathematical functions. We do click one. It saves it to a temporary file. As you see, so we can actually run it. Let's run. Oh, we have to exit this real quick and run it. Now this one didn't run, but as you see, all these functions will give you some ideas. Probably you need to take a look at the arguments that are passed. There is a text adventure, uh, text adventure game. I've searched for game and there was a text adventure game. I clicked on two, it saves its temp file and then we run this. It actually says you're in a dark room. There are three doors. Which one do you choose? Red door. You enter the red door, face the dangerous dragon. Game over. Okay. It's a simple game, but it works. Anyways, like I said, there's the utilities, which allows you to search Python functions, save them to the Python functions folder. Let's review the code and see how this all works. So in the concurrent calls pi, we are importing AsyncIO, OpenAI. The requirements for this is OpenAI and term color. Time JSON term color is to print colorful stuff to the terminal. We are from our list stop by file importing general purposes list like this. And from Tenacity, we are importing this stuff. This is for retrying. Like I said, be careful running these functions. They are returned from GPT-4, but just make sure we are checking for an environment variable for our key. If not, we are creating it. But you have to put your API key here. Just say that. And we are assigning to purposes, the general purpose. You can actually assign part of the list if you want to 
test it out here in this case i'm saying testing it out with 10 purposes you don't want to do that we have our save to json function which saves it to async.json and we have our python function generator async you have to define functions with an async keyword and this is our retry decorator to use tenacity we wait for from 1 to 60 seconds each time it fails a total of 60 times Anyway, here we are setting the global tokens. We're not really using it, but I'm just going to leave it there. I don't want to change anything about the code. We just make it a wait. So we are defining an async. Since we are defining an async function, we have to await. And we do have to make a call to OpenAI with make sure it's a create, not create. If you want to make async calls, you have to put a in front of create. So here is the GPT 3.5 Turbo. You can choose GPT-4. You're a helpful Python programmer who writes excellent functions. And we are asking for some functions for a given purpose. Tokens is returned from the object. Response is returned from the object as well. So we're returning purpose, the code, which is the response here, and the tokens used. And there is also a function to make all the calls at once. So you can use this as well. Make sure to put the decorator in front of it too. I'm just going to do it right now, real quick. Save that. So this does the exact same thing as this one. I'll make async calls. We create a this. This just one. This make async calls actually makes it in two batches. We create a task list. We check for half length. Right. We use this. We get our results for I purpose enumerate purposes. Async call started. We append the tasks to the loop to create task with the function, Python function generator with the purpose. And if we have created a task for half of the purpose, wait for them to complete, sleep for 60 seconds. So we check for that. And then we extend the results with the tasks, async IO, gather. And we say first half of the async calls finished. Then we clear the task list for the next half, await async IO, sleep. Here I'm sleeping 60 seconds. Okay, feel free to change that. Await the remaining tasks and store their results. And now we wait and extend the results with await async IO getter tasks. Then we say tasks are finished. And then we use our save JSON file to save it to ASM to JSON. Then we start, we, we initiate start time with time.time. .time. Then we say our loop is going to be async IO dot get event loop, loop dot run until complete. And then we call the function, make async calls, which is, which is our function. And after that, we set an end time. After this is done, then we say the elapsed time is so, such and so, or like you saw, or about a hundred of it. It takes about five, six minutes. This is pretty good. Uh, and then total tokens use is zero. And now we say try, open the async IO, load that file. We check for encoding errors, hopefully. If there is any, we print it. Otherwise, we get all the items in data, key and value. We look for if tokens used, then we print how many tokens are used. And then we keep adding the tokens so that we can print at the end how many tokens we've used. So this is about it. The list.py includes the list and utilities include the right functions from JSON the file. I'm not going to go over that. And then the search Python functions function actually searches over the functions. To activate it, you have to call one or the other right, or both. So all the code will be available at Patreon. I hope you enjoy this. Let's take a look at a few more functions. So we have functions like automating a web browser with Selenium. We see you have to pip install that, building a simple cryptocurrency, apparently. <laughs> That's interesting. You can use these, building a tic-tac-toe AI. Huh, tic-tac-toe AI. Does it run? I'm not sure. But I guess oh, you'll have to call the, so this is a function. You'll have to call the function at the end. Remember that? So this can give you a lot of ideas converting CSV to JSON. We have two of them. So we're going to have 150 functions, all of which will be available at Patreon. Detecting faces in an image with CV2. Finding the shortest path in a graph, for example. Generating a bar chart from data. Yeah. Generating a procedural terrain. You have to pip install some of these libraries. Generating haiku forms. Identifying genetic patterns. Identifying objects 
in an image with TensorFlow and CV2. So these are all very interesting. Just make sure that they're working. If not, you can work with them, get some inspiration, implementing page rank algorithm, running logistic regression. <coughs> so it's uh, simulating a simple ecosystem. Yeah, anyway, this was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to check out AI, EchoHive AI Academy at echohive.live and see you in the next one. Thank you.